I'd just like to introduce uh, Phil Shelley. He's the Managing Director of Basketball Education, uh, developer and head coach of Shooting Hoops, specialist shooting analysis and coaching consultants, and um, program manager, senior educator for Chisholm Basketball Academy. Um, so please make uh, Phil welcome. Thanks, Jody, uh, and thank you for inviting me along. Um, it's an honour to come and uh, present to you today. It's actually, uh, I was here for the, I was a guest presenter for the 40th anniversary for Country Victorian Basketball, which also means a lot to me being an alumni. I was played under 18 Country Vic myself, so it's uh, always a pleasure to come back and, and, and have any contribution I can. Um, we've got very limited time today. I wish we had three weeks to go over this stuff. I love this stuff. Um, but we'll do the best we can in the 45 minutes. So I'm going to put my little stopwatch on here so I'm keeping on track. Now, one of the things that uh, we're up against with basketball shooting coaching is so many myths and misconceptions and conflicting information out there about how it should be taught, how it should be executed. And also the fact that it's quite intimidating to teach something to somebody if you're not very good at it yourself. Hands up if, if you, you agree with that. Would you agree that it's, a, yeah, okay. So it takes a little bit of, a little bit of um, guts to get out there and show somebody something that you may not be able to execute that well yourself, but you can make up for that by knowledge, okay? If you know your stuff, you know how it looks, you know how to teach it, you know key teaching points and teaching cues, an understanding of how people learn, you can still make a really positive contribution. You can also use the best player in your team as the model for certain things, okay? But we'll talk about that later. Now, we're not gonna be able to cover everything to do with shooting today, but I'll go through a few things. I've developed a, a curriculum and a method for analyzing and teaching shooting. And, and I've used an acronym to, again, help make it more user-friendly to people and less intimidating. So if anyone's done a, a um, first aid course where you've got Dr. ABC, helps you remember dangers, response, airways, breathing, circulation, just stays in there a little bit and you've got a systematic approach to doing something. Well, that's exactly what I've done here, except it's an actual word, uh, which is nice. Sometimes you see acronyms that have got a word in there that shouldn't be in there, but this makes sense. So I'm just gonna really quickly go over that and show you which element of this we're discussing today. So preparation is the first part of it, okay? And when you're teaching shooting, Preparation is critical, okay? That involves what your target is. So many players don't have a specific target. You can improve a player's shooting immensely just by saying, what are you looking at? And so many kids will say, the square? You don't want them to hit the square, okay? So just narrowing the focus on that sort of stuff. So I teach underside of the back of the ring, but we'll go through all this uh, later. So preparation also encompasses your stance, your shooting pocket, your balance, your posture, and your target and your hand positioning on the ball. So there's quite a bit in that, okay, and it's critical. The next part is the execution, and that's the motion of the shot, that's the flow, the rhythm, the timing. In, in technical terms, called summation of forces. It's how well you capture all of the power from your joints in a nice fluid motion and transfer that into the shot. So that's the area that we're gonna actually cover in the time we've got today, as best we can, okay? You could spend two, two days just on preparation and all this sort of stuff. Next part is release. Now, depending on, no matter what the sport is, whether it's a golf swing or a tennis shot or a, a drop punt in football, biomechanists, skill acquisition people, PE teachers, coaches, they all break motor skills down into three components. There's preparatory movements, there's the action, and then there's follow through. So whether it's a golf swing where you've got your belt buckle pointing to the target or a drop punt where you've got your toe pointing to the target, in our case, hand point at the target. They've all got follow through, execution and preparatory movements. So nothing's different in my methodology. However, in our sport, there's two elements to follow through. You might have a beautiful release where you lock it out elbow above eyebrow, but you might have a terrible follow through with bunched up hand in the cookie jar, okay? You might have a beautiful follow through, but a gooseneck release. So I've broken that into two parts. So there's release and follow through. So far, that spells the word P-E-R-F, or perf, okay? Now, what that does, that makes up what we call a subroutine of shooting. And, and that's how all skill acquisition people deal with teaching skills. The next thing is how do we coach it? And that's what we're gonna help you with today, okay? So we observe and evaluate it, okay? We examine and evaluate, there's two E words. So once you know the subroutine, you know what you're looking for, where do you stand to look for certain things? Do you stand in front? Do you stand on the side? Do you stand behind? 
what are you actually looking for? And that's coaching. Too many people think coaching is setting up drills and running drills. The beginner coaches do their session plans, they go do that drill, and then while that drill's going on, they're setting up the cones for the other drill, thinking that that's all they've got to do. The drills are there so you can coach, so you can observe, analyze, provide feedback. Okay? So if anything at all today you learn from me, go into your drills with that mentality. All right, so you evaluate it. Next thing, you go to school on every shot. Try to teach your players, and we'll do this with the girls down here, is teach them to go to school on every shot. You can learn something from every shot. And a good example of that is dart players, professional dart players. If anyone's ever watched it, when they have to get a double, that's the ring around the outside to win the game, they've got three darts to do it quite often. So they'll deliberately throw one a little wider. And then based on the information from that first one, they've got a far greater chance of making the second one, and then they win the game with the second one. And that's going to school on every shot. Yet how many of our basketball players have that mentality? We want them to learn from the previous shot, make a necessary adjustment, if it's long, if it's short, if it's left, if it's right, okay? And they, in time, with that mentality, they become their own shot doctor, all right? Einstein said, you know something well if you can explain it to a six-year-old. Okay, so I do a lot of peer coaching in my sessions. I have players teach each other. And they leave my sessions, have a, a far better understanding because they've been forced to be the coach. I do a lot of stuff in front of the mirror, have the players every morning, every night, clean their teeth, put the toothbrush down, turn in the front of the mirror, and do 10 shots with good form. And they're the coach. If that person in the mirror has their elbow wrong, or has the ball on the wrong side of the body, or is starting too high, they look in the mirror and go, that's not acceptable. I know it's different. So there's 20 reps a day where they're the, they're the coach, okay? And it reinforces their learning and speeds things up. So next thing, you coach it. Another C word. Too many beginner coaches only provide feedback that's critical. When they see something going wrong, they'll step in and fix it. Okay, they forget, and it's a common thing, I've been teaching coaching for 20 years, it's a common thing that they don't provide positive feedback when they see something being done well. So get into that habit as well. So once you know what you're looking for, you see somebody who's got a good elbow, you see somebody who's got good rhythm, tell them, great rhythm on that last shot. However, look at your feet, let's fix your feet, whatever it might be. Another C word, correct it. If it's, if it's a flaw, if it's not right, correct it, okay? So. Next thing, try again. So that's the whole process of how we learn anything. That's the feedback loop. So we evaluate it, we correct it, or we'll coach it, and then we try again. Now how we coach it is based on this word, feedback. So we provide feedback, should be timely, it should be precise, should be related to what they're doing. Okay, can be critical, but it can also be positive. The most important thing in my whole acronym is that, the O, the order of teaching. If you love what I'm teaching you today and you go home with all of these teaching points and then you work with a, a young player this week and you tell them seven things they're doing wrong, you'll cause paralysis by analysis. The real skill is knowing how to prioritise the things that you know and what's best not to tell them just now and what's best to tell them right now. And you just work on one, maybe two key teaching points so that they practice with a purpose, okay? For the next 20 minutes, I don't care whether the shot goes in, I just want your guide hand from here to here. And that's all we're worrying about today, okay? Rather than bog them down with seven things. So that's, that's an approach to that. So order of teaching is absolutely critical. Next thing, reinforce those one or two key teaching points. Work on those things with a purpose. Go out and practice in the driveway with a specific purpose and reinforce them. And then the last one, I love this one, because my acronym works really great, because you've got to master those one or two things, make them muscle memory and move on. There's lots of M words in that one. Make them muscle memory and move on, okay? So that's the, the acronym, and it spells perfect form. So there's a lot of curriculum underneath that. That's just the framework for presenting stuff we're doing. But today, all we're worrying about is the execution part of this. Okay, but you can see how that feedback, that's how we learn anything. Okay, you evaluate it, you coach it, you try again. You evaluate it, you coach it, you try again. That's the process. So that only took five years to come up with. Um, 
but uh, I've done a lot of work, so that seems very simple for you guys. Okay. Now, what I want to work on today is the execution of the shot. And for those of you who do a little bit of study on your own, and, and a lot don't because you're so bogged down with all the other elements of your program. I know, you know, you've got the management of the teams, you've got X's and O's, you've got transition, you've got injuries to deal with, you've got everything. Sometimes travel arrangements. It's so hard to say, I'm going to be a great shooting coach and spend a lot of time on this. All right, well, I realized years ago that I wasn't the best X's and O's guy in the world, and I realized that every team needs players who can actually put the ball in the hole, whether they run shuffle or motion or flex or whatever. So I've just decided to, that's my little niche, and I wanted to be as good as I can be at that. And I, I tell people, I'm actually, I'm all right now, but um, I'm going to be really good at it when I'm 80, because I'm learning every day. And, and I would like nothing better than one of you guys today to question something I've taught you and say, listen, I don't think that's right and here's why. And if you can do that, I'll change. Because everything I'm teaching you has been backed up by scientific research and thousands and thousands of my own repetitions and thousands of kids that I've coached that I've learned from. So if it makes me better by someone pointing something out, I'll adopt that. And that's what coaching is, it's adopting and adapting, okay? Nice way to say stealing, really, but stealing ideas and using them, okay? So now, one of the things we'll discuss today is one motion shooting form versus two motion shooting form. Hands up if you haven't heard that terminology before in basketball circles. Okay, good, all right, no worries. So most of you have heard a little bit about that. Now, examples of one and two motion shooting, all right, and we'll get into, I'll show you some video examples in a minute, but. Where it's derived a lot from is a lot of the athleticism in the NBA, you've got guys who can you know, jump out of the gym, they are predominantly two motion shooters where they have to jump up in the air, hang in the air, bring the ball up high above their head and then make that, make that shot over long athletic defenders. And there are female athletes who are very good at two motion shooting as well. All right? But historically, because of the differences just genetic differences, okay? Now, let me clarify that, uh, relatively speaking, in the hip girdle region, females are as strong as men, if not sometimes stronger. I've coached Debbie Flintoff King's son. I'm friends with that family, and you just go back and look at Debbie Flintoff King in her heyday. You tell me that she's not powerful through the hips, so, you know, now, guys, uh, males, have greater muscle mass and broader shoulders, greater leverage mechanical advantage in the upper body. So they've been able to do the more athletic um, two motion shooting. For that reason, there's been, you know, people over the years have said, oh, one motion shooting is shooting like a girl, okay? Now, I understand how sensitive that, that statement is given the l latest TV ads and stuff, you know, where the guy says, oh, you throw like a girl, you know? So I don't mean that disrespectful at all, but I'm actually suggesting today that we consider that because the reasons that people have been given over the years is you can't get your shot away in international competition if you have a one motion shot, okay? You've got to get some hang time, you've got to get up high, you've got to get the ball up high. And Steph Curry's proven that to be completely wrong. Um, he's been recorded as having the fastest release in the NBA um, and he has a flat shot. It comes from in front of the forehead, still gets it away and he has endless shooting range, anywhere over half court, he can make that shot. So we have to, at some point in time, question some of these myths that are going around and say, well, hang on, let's just work through this. All right, so this we're going to work on down on court a little bit is try and help players understand how they can get a quicker release, capture the upward motion better, and, and, and explore this idea of a two motion shot. I'm not presenting it as the be all and end all. You notice when I, my perfect form acronym had for you tacked on the end of it. There's not one perfect shooting motion for everybody, okay? People have different um, fast twitch muscle fibers, they have different dominant eye. I personally, I'm a left eye dominant shooter, but I'm a right hand dominant, okay? Some people have different flexibility, different balance, different posture, okay? So we deal with that, but what I'm presenting today is what I believe to be the simplest, most comfortable, most biomechanically efficient and repeatable shooting form as a cookie cutter that we can try to get people as close to that within their body, within their, within their personal constrictions. And the other benefit of what I'm about to show you is the visual learning element. To try and describe in words how a shot should look, 
seeing is believing. So the pros and cons, okay, I've, I've listed that briefly. The, the other reason why I'm, I'm an advocate of one motion shooting is because you can extend your range almost limitlessly with this principle. If you're taught to start the ball above your head from a young age, and then you want to extend your range to be a good three-point shooter or beyond, it's very difficult because you, you're not using all the, all the levers properly. Okay? A one-motion shooter, if the game situation dictates that they have to hang in the air and bring the ball behind their head a little bit and make that shot, they can do that. But someone who only knows two-motion shooting struggles to extend their range beyond three-point line very accurately. And that's my logic behind it. The other reason is I teach um, a low, relatively low shooting pocket compared to some coaches. Reason being that it's close to a three, it's, it's close to a triple threat stance. It's a slightly higher than triple threat stance, but it's very quick if you want to put it to the floor. So if you're starting here and you want to put it to the floor, it's more difficult. So there's other reasons for that. I teach a relatively low shooting pocket, horizontal forearm shooting pocket for free throw shooting because we need to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of repetitions at the free throw line. It wins games, it wins championships. So why not have a free throw shooting action that closely mimics the action that is going to extend your range? So for every free throw you practice, it's a key component of your long range shooting. They're not two different shots. All right, now let me clarify that as well. The distance from the basket determines how high a shooting pocket you need. If you're inside the key, you shoot it from what we, what's termed a set point. So you're not going to bring it down to a low shooting pocket if you're in amongst the tall timbers. And you don't need the power, you're close to the basket, so you start it high. Okay, as you move further back from the basket, you need more levers involved, so you have a lower shooting pocket. As you move further back, lower shooting pocket. When you're right back outside three, lower shooting pocket again, perhaps with a body and ball dip to get that power. That's all part of a one motion shot, but it's all on the same shot plane. Okay, so I'll, I'll leave it at that in the time we've got, but we'll keep going. So the, um, the low release point, the myths are you wouldn't get it away. I've addressed that. We'll show you that that's not right. And again, if experts say that Steph Curry shoots like a girl and all the sports scientists have proven that the now same people are saying he could be one of the greatest shooters of all time, um, why wouldn't everybody, male or female, seriously consider shooting like a girl? Okay? So I teach every player to shoot like a girl, I guess. I teach one motion shooting. All right? Now, here's Diana Tarossi, an example of a single motion shot where it starts with a low, low shooting pocket. Now, that's off a dribble, okay? We're going to work off shooting off a catch down here as well. But when the, when the ball is low, this is my daughter Jazz. <laughs> Uh, hang on. That didn't want to play. Basically, it's same deal, th quick release, catch it, shoot it in one motion. All right. This is um, my little example that's not playing through that. Oh, here we go. It's, just, it's not moving through here. Sorry. On my thing, it's not moving. So I'll go back to the other one. So you can see it's relatively relatively low shooting pocket compared to raising it above your head. Um, you see here. One of the, um, one of the girls tonight, uh, Mia Murray, playing tonight, watch her shot, similar. She has so quick to get it in the shooting pocket and out in one motion. All right, we're gonna work on some of that stuff down here as well. Now, uh, this is my little guy I've developed called Peter Perfect and what I like to say is, I, I use a saying, is perfection is not when there's nothing else to add. Perfection is when there's nothing else to take away. All right, it's a bit like refining a diamond. You, your diamonds come from coal mines, and when you've got them, they've got gross flaws. Okay? You've got to get the dust and the coal and the grit and reduce all those very gross flaws and gross errors from that thing, and it starts to look a, bit, a little bit like a diamond. And then you take a bit more away, unnecessary things away, and polish it up and becomes a diamond. Same with shooting. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm not adding a lot of complicated stuff. In most cases when I work with a player, I'm actually getting rid of unnecessary movement. Why are you starting it over here? Why are you dipping it? 
Why are you moving your elbow out here? Why are you bringing your hand here? And I'm taking stuff away until we get to what is very simple and very repeatable and very comfortable. And the key, you'll hear me say the word comfortable a lot. It needs to be comfortable. And then this is a, a guideline for people within their personal um, limitations can get as close to as we can, okay? So that's the sort of stuff we're going to talk about down on court. We're going to work on ways of, um, and, and so many of my clients, I have to undo what they're currently doing. And I say to people, um, what I teach is not that hard to learn, and I'm quite good at teaching it. The hardest bit is, is often unlearning what you currently do, okay? And I'll show you that. Just Everyone just stand up for me for a minute. <laughs> All right, I, I, want you to, um, I want you to do this. As, as soon as I say it, I want you to do it. Okay, don't think. Just fold your arms. Go. Good. Okay, all right, undo them now. All right, now do that. Quick, go. Good. All right, now fold your arms, other arm on top. Go. Who's still thinking about it? All right, let them go. Do that, other thumb on top. Who's still, who's still thinking? All right. Okay, just sit down for a sec. So you, you have a certain way of doing things. Most of, the, most of the kids that you coach and the ones who are really keen on their basketball are shooting hundreds and hundreds of shots every night in the driveway are ingraining habits. And, and you've got to, sometimes they're bad habits, so you've got to try and change that. Anytime they shoot without thinking, muscle memory takes over and it's a very stubborn bugger to deal with, all right? It takes over, they don't even know they're doing it. Okay, I have girls and boys that I coach where I pass them a basketball and say, just hold it there. And while I'm talking to them about something, the ball is creeping up like it's on a string. The ball is creeping up around here without them even knowing it's happening. Okay? It's just habit. They don't even know that their body has just done that. So there's some of the things we're going to deal with downstairs. It's really good that we've got quite an array of different body shapes, sizes, heights, stages of physical development. So you'll get to see a lot of um, varied shooting actions and then hopefully we'll help you start to look at okay what can we tell this girl what can we do with that girl keep in mind it's just about the the power and the speed of release for today okay so I've asked the girls to already pair up so what we'll do for starters is if you could um, everyone just come out for a sec and just form a half circle for me all right okay now I've asked the girls to ignore anything they heard from next door and just not think just shoot how they normally would shoot so we see their true current muscle memory, good or bad. All right, so for starters now, you can grab a basketball each for now. Okay. All right, and we'll just get you, when I say go, just want you all get into your shooting pocket for me. Uh, is everyone familiar with the term shooting pocket or shot pocket? That's where you'd start the shot. Okay, so ready, go. And then freeze like a statue. All right, so as you can look around, we can see overall reasonably low shooting pocket. No one's starting in the set point, okay? No one's got it really tucked up high but under the chin, some have. No one's got it down near the thigh. So we're kind of in the ballpark of what I teach anyway, but you will see all sorts of variations, okay? Take note of guide hands, different positioning of guide hands. All right, and then what I'm looking for from the front view is an alignment I call the shooting plane, up through the shooting toe, through the shooting eye, and straight up, okay? I'm looking at whether the ball is starting on that plane or whether it's starting over here or starting outside plane, all right? I'm looking to see how many players have got their palm on the ball, looking at, at alignment issues, who's low, stance, okay? All right, so overall, We'll move on to some, just some shots now because in the time we've got, okay, but teaching points with a shooting pocket. I teach, actually, you did really well there. Good, just give her the ball for a sec. Really impressed with you. High five. See how she didn't do a high five like that or like that or like that? Her muscle memory for a high five is pretty good. It's comfortable. The arm hangs and it just goes up and does high five. All right, so what if I was to say, let's do a low five? Is that complicated? It's complicated. Okay, it's because he's not used to doing it. You're used to doing that. All right, but low five, same thing. You're comfortable, your arm's hanging, and that's just low five. So if you just do that, and your finger is on that shot plane, that's a good starting point for a shot, because one, it's comfortable, and it's relaxed, and it's natural, rather than 
getting contorted. How many of you coach players who get themselves all contorted to shoot a basketball shot? We don't need that, it's just gotta be comfortable. So shoulder blades should be relaxed and just low five, and it's ready to go. Now, players who are cross-eye dominant might be their left eye dominant, right hand shooters. You ask them to do that and put the basketball in their left hand and they will take their hand to the ball rather than the ball to the hand. So a good teaching cue to get good alignment is low five, wrinkles in the wrist, and you've loaded your wrist, you've loaded your shoulder because your shoulder is next to your hip. If it's out here, that shoulder spring that I showed you on the video, you're not loading up your shoulder spring, are you? It's already expended. So low five, shoulder hanging, we're good. Bring the ball to the hand because the hand's where it needs to be. Okay, so you girls can just start with the ball on your left. You're a lefty, so you put the ball under your right hand. Okay, just on your hip for now, in your non-shooting hand. Show me a nice low five, wrinkles in the wrist. Okay, good. Now, bend your knees slightly. Now, don't move that hand, because it's on shooting plane. Bring the ball to the hand, not the hand to the ball. Now, just position your index finger on the needle hole. Now, we know that I teach index finger as a dominant finger. We know that the index finger now is in the center of the ball. We know that the ball is on shot plane, and we're in a good starting point for the shot. So mechanically, everything should be in a straight line. Now, you will notice that the forearm right now, because of the hip, it's on the outside of the hip, the forearm is not pointing at the basket right now. It's pointing to the left of the basket. Or in your, what's your name? Liv. Liv, in Liv's case, she's a lefty, is pointing to the right side of the basket. But that's okay. Once that elbow gets past the hip, it naturally and organically and comfortably comes on plane, and from there on it's straight. But if we want it starting straight, we get all contorted. You see, it's not worth it. So the ball will come on plane nicely if you just relax and let it come on plane. So the key thing is a nice, comfortable. So now, shrug your shoulders. I'll show you what I hate. Can I have your ball for a sec, please? I'll show you what I hate about Kevin Durant, one of the greatest players in the world, probably of all time. Starts his free throws like this. Your right-hand shooter. I hate it. But I'll tell you what I love about what Kevin Durant does. Does the wiggles. Does the shrugs. He loosens, you know, loosey-goosey, because you've got to be relaxed and comfortable. All right? So there's good and bad in everything. But again, it's perfect form for you. Um, some people have just practiced and practiced and practiced more than anyone else on the planet. All right? So now, let's pair up, and let's take some shots with your partner, just with your heels on the blue line for me, so we can just see your shooting action. OK, quick, let's go spread yourselves around. One shooter, one rebounder. Take three shots and then swap over. OK, let's get some over here as well. OK, just go when you're ready. Let's go, just so we can see the different and various shooting forms. Go, yep. Coaches, what we're looking for is how many of these girls seem to be capturing their upward motion? How many seem to be doing it in two motions? How many seem to be doing it in one fluid motion? How many seem to be struggling a bit with distance? Coaches, I want you to particularly pay attention to how many bring it to their face and then shoot it from their chin or their face. Okay. All right, swap it over. Shoot it to rebound it. Okay, hold it there. Not many start with that low, nice, slow shooting pocket we, we taught, did they? You see how they, we, we did this as comfortable. A lot of them from this far out chose to either start it there and then try and make the distance, or they started it somewhere around here and went one, two, all right? Now, one teaching cue that I use without using any other gadgets is uh, railway stations, all right? So I live... Uh, in Pakenham, and Pakenham, you've got to go through Dandenong to get to Flinders Street. So I say, if this is Pakenham Railway Station, this is Dandenong, that's Flinders Street, most of you girls right now are going two motions. So your train starts at Pakenham, it stops at Dandenong, and then it continues on to Flinders Street. 
All right? So I just want one thought process right now is I want you to go express to Flinders Street, straight through, straight through Danny Nong. It's the only thing I want you thinking about. One, move, one smooth motion. Start. Now, I can tell you now, this ain't going to happen because muscle memory won't allow it. Muscle memory just will not permit it. It's a stubborn bugger. All right, just hold it there, girls. Switch it over real quick, switch it over. Start at Danny Nong, start low at Danny Nong, and straight through to Flinders Street. Oh, sorry, start at, start at Pakenham. Start at Pakenham, don't stop at Danny Nong, straight through to Flinders Street. All right, hold it there. Now, we didn't see too many that actually lowered it, did they? They still started at Dandenong, most of them. Hopefully, you're seeing what I'm seeing there. All right, because it's, it takes hundreds of repetitions with a, with a purpose, thinking about that to do that. All right, so one way we can adjust that. Uh, let's, with your partners, let's use a chair now. And you're going to be sitting in a chair from about this range. OK. On here, on here. Okay, so what we need you doing now, up your ball for a sec, tilt your chair side on so that you can get your feet underneath the chair. It makes it more balanced, like a squatting position. Okay, have your feet 11 o'clock. So if the ring is 12 o'clock, your feet are pointing at 11 o'clock, and have the ball low five, comfortable and it's sitting on your knee. And from there, you want to go out of the chair and straight through in one motion, all right? So that's your only challenge. Straight through in one motion. Don't stop at Dandenong. And trust me, if you've been to Dandenong Station, you do not want to stop and get out. You do not want to get out at Dandenong. OK? Now, here's one here load the wrist. So one joint that wasn't loaded. One of our springs wasn't being used. OK? Wrinkles in the wrist. Load the wrist. Yep. Good. Nicely loaded. Keep the ball off the palm. All right. So now we've got our joints loaded. We've got our hips, knees and ankles, shoulders, wrists, elbows, up out of the chair in one motion. Go. All right. You stood up and had a cup of tea and then went to Danny Nong and shot it from Danny Nong. Do it again. One motion, straight out of the chair, straight to the basket. That's a little better. Nice. Now, it goes without saying, but just in case, we always want to be reaching into the basket and finish freezing our follow through, OK, at the basket. Now, freeze your follow through, two Fs. Freeze your follow through, two Es. Lock it out, elbow above eyebrow, two Es. I always use lots of word association, teaching cues that kids can remember and relate to. OK, try that again. Straight out of the chair with some speed and one smooth motion. OK, swap it over with your partner. Quick, quick, yep, let's go. Have your feet, feet at 11 o'clock, feet at 1 o'clock for you for the lefty. Yep, let's go. Let's go, quick. Nice, this was good, this was pretty good here, OK. And again, just keep going. Don't wait for me to say. Just, get, just do it. Load your wrist. This looked smooth. She stopped a little bit. It slowed up at Danny Nong. Didn't quite stop at Danny Nong, but slowed up. OK, that was, that was looking really smooth. All right? Good. OK, now, girls, can you quickly run those chairs and put them on the baseline for me? I'd like to spend more time on this, but I've got to get through a number of different things. OK? Now, which of, you, which of you know that you struggle from long range with your shooting? Anyone know for sure? Good. You can come out for me. OK. Um, I'm bringing everyone out, not just you, so we're going to have a few. So I'll pick you, I'll pick you, and I'll pick you. So you can come out for me, all right? Partners, come out and stand behind them, all right? And now, this is a, a drill that is very effective, OK? But there's pros and cons of any drill. This drill involves somebody putting their hands on your athlete. Okay? Now, I've got four kids. I prefer 
uh, the strange bloke wasn't putting his hands on my daughter. All right, so you always ask the parents, ask the child if that's okay, but in this case, you use a teammate. But, and the other thing, just check, there's no, anyone here with an existing back injury or knee injury, if you are, just sit out of the drill. But if not, but what I want you doing is five consecutive jumps. So you land, jump again, five times, okay? So just put the ball down next to you. Just show me two good jumps first. All right, show me two good jumps. Great, yep. Okay, I love your arm action. Um, I'm a strength conditioning background and, and throwing those arms back and throwing them up. So show me again, show the rest of the girls how well you use your arms. Great, yep. So a common thing you see, and particularly with the female athletes I've coached, I call it budgie wings. You can't jump high with little budgie wings. You throw those arms back like an eagle, throw them up and you get more power. So girls, just show me five good jumps. Good. Now you see the improvement in some of the other girls by using a good girl as an example. So if you can't demonstrate it yourself, use your best, your best uh, student or your best uh, player. Now, here's the drill. The uh, partner is gonna put hands on your shoulders and apply a little bit more than gentle pressure downward. You're not forcing down, okay, but just apply gentle pressure. You've got to jump against the resistance of the arms and then five in a row don't stop. As soon as they've done the fifth jump, the people who are behind them, quickly give them a basketball. Don't think, shoot, see your target. Okay, so five quick jumps and then a quick shot straight after the fifth jump. Push down, push down, girls. Come on, make them force up. Jump, 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 come on. Force, force through those arms, force through those arms. On the fifth one, grab your basketball, don't think, shoot. Good, okay. Of those girls that just shot, hands up, did anybody feel that the ball seemed a lot lighter than it used to be? Hands up if you did. All right, good, we were probably three out of five. Yeah, four out of, yeah, good, all right. That's what we're aiming for, so swap it over now. Now, while you watch what they're doing, just the theory behind this, it's motor unit recruitment. If any of you have ever picked up uh, something you thought was going to be light, uh, something you thought was going to be heavy, and it's actually light, like an esky or something, you go, whoa, okay? Your brain thought it was going to be heavy, so it fired all the motor neurons in all the working muscles at once and said, we need power, but you didn't need it. Most players I work with are not firing all their muscles in sequence, and this, this, help, this drill helps with that. So let's try this again, five quick jumps. Really jump high. Push down, push down, girls. Make them force through it. Make them, give them some resistance. On the fifth one, don't think, shoot. Beautiful, see how relaxed this was? It's, uh, Liv, Liv. Liv's shot was so smooth and comfortable. Did it feel effortless? Little bit, that's okay, all right. I paid you five bucks before to say it was awesome, all right? But now, what this does, the theory behind it, see all these lights in here? If we walked in and we wanted immediate power, we wanted to illuminate the place really quickly, and we go over to the fuse box and we put a finger on each switch and go bang, and they all come on at once, we've got power, all right? But a lot of athletes this age aren't doing that. So you think of the switch, your brain sends motor neurons to your working muscles, okay? Sends electrical impulse to your, to your working muscles, and if they all work together, they all get recruited at the same time and bang. All right, but unfortunately, developmental players quite often aren't learning that, so they come in and they flick a couple of switches here, a couple of switches there, and they all fire out of sequence, and they don't get the power. But when you do this type of drill, they realize one, the, the penny drops. They'll do one, and they go, wow, that just felt like a balloon. I just shot a three-pointer, and it felt like a balloon. And then once they've done that once, it's easier to revisit that and do it again under their own steam without the need for someone pushing down. All right, let's just do that one more time each. Let's go. So you know the drill now, really power up with the jumps, girls, push down. Okay, now don't think, shoot. Nice. All right, good. The pleasing thing is none of the shots are falling short, so they're getting ample power there. Okay, so you can play around with that. All right, that's a good drill to help teach motor unit recruitment. Now, one of the other things that's a very um, powerful method for doing that, and it's derived from plyometric training, jump training, is stepping off something and landing and then jumping again, okay? Because the landing makes you initiate all the working muscles to absorb the force of landing. So I've got some highly technical training equipment here we're gonna use for this, okay? Um, 
safety issues when you do this. I normally only do this using aluminium benches. Um, a lot of stadiums now have got those, those long, long aluminium benches, and they're really good. They're nice and sturdy, and they're, they're about that height, a little higher, and you just step off those and land. As soon as you land, you're going to take a shot. So can we get um, just two girls to hold that steady for me? And thanks for volunteering. You're good on you. You can go first. All right. OK, so just stand on that. Now, what I need you doing is don't jump off. Just step. Step, land, and shoot. OK, as soon as you land, you power up in it like you're on a trampoline. Go. Good. OK, and let's just form a line. So let's get everybody having a go at that quick. And then, and then the last two, we'll get these two girls to have a go as well. All right, so just step off and like you're on a trampoline. Now, nah, that, that, that trampoline took too long to recoil. OK, trampolines don't stop at the bottom. They come straight back up. Lower lift. Unload, explode. OK, think, think, unload, explode. Two motions, try and do it in two feet. Land both feet at the same time on your trampoline. It's a brand new, super powerful trampoline. Good. OK. Good. Unload, explode. Yep. All right, now, notice that. What's your name, sorry? Tess. Tess. When Tess was loading up all of her joints, her body was lifting this one up. Instead of loading it down, the body was lifting it up. The next drill will help with that. OK? But that's what I call body-ball relationship. And that's where we're heading towards if you can get the ball and the body to come down together, OK? And then the ball initiates the upward motion. What we're trying to avoid with long-range shooting is body down, ball up. OK? See the difference? Body, ball, body down, ball up makes it very difficult to shoot from range. But body ball down together is one of the best things you can do. So body ball down together, ball initiates the upward motion. So just think about that, girls, while you do that. So body ball down together. OK, see, that was, as she was lowering down, the ball was coming up. It's this muscle memory we've got to contend with. Ample power. She wasn't aiming for the backboard. Were you aiming for the backboard? Were you surprised by how much power you just got? Good. That's the one where the penny drops. She's just walked away going, I didn't know I could shoot that easy. Good. Yep. You've got current injuries. You can do this. How come you're not doing this? Oh, sorry. OK, so can someone else give these girls a break and, and they can have a go? Thanks. All right, so another teaching cue is this is hot coals. We want to have minimal contact time with the ground. If you spend too much time, your, your sneakers are going to burn. Minimal contact time with the ground. And the key teaching point on any of this sort of stuff is do it quietly. So coaches, use your senses, use your eyes, use your ears, OK? I listen as much as I look when I do this drill. If I can hear a thump when they hit the ground, that means that the impact of landing has been absorbed through their joints, not through their muscles. Muscles are like rubber bands. They have an elastic quality. If I can't hear them land, that means they've absorbed the impact of landing with all of their muscles, and they've stored elastic energy, potential energy, which means this is the principle behind plyometric training, is a controlled eccentric loading followed by a voluntary concentric contraction it creates a more powerful concentric contraction. So with that in mind, girls, I don't want to hear you land. And it's a super brand new trampoline from Kmart, best trampoline ever made. Let's go. Oh, I heard that. It's down like you had concrete boots on. OK. No, too noisy. Unload, explode. Uh, good. Yep. Unload, explode. Good. You see how the ball's coming up to the chin? Nice action, that. Good. Yep. Nice. Nice and quiet. Effortless. OK, we'll hold it there. Unfortunately, where we go with this, there's a bunch more things we can do. But the key teaching point of trampolines, just to finish up, let's get everybody around the three-point line with a, with a basketball real quick. OK. 
the trampoline thing I can't stress enough. Being loose, okay, and being on a trampoline like a boxer, loose. All right, so what I want you to do is everything's loose. You're on your trampoline. Now, shooting pocket, I want you to go one trampoline, don't shoot. Second trampoline, you shoot. So it's one, two, release, okay, loose. Okay, I just, um, I just had a cool thought of every single one of those shots going in and I was just going to walk off and go, yeah. <laughs> it would have been nice. All right, thanks. That's, I'd love to do a lot more, but that's the time we've got. So. Okay, thanks very much, Phil. Um, thanks, girls. Just firstly, before we go to questions for Phil, can I thank and ask you guys to thank the girls for their um, efforts today. They've put in a, a long, hard afternoon. Thanks, girls. Okay, has anyone got any questions for Phil? Uh, too confusing or too well explained? He's given us a lot of information today and a lot of it's been exceptionally yes. great. Yeah, the question was, when you're teaching those things, will there be a period of time where their technique changes a little? And, and you know, I think where you're going with that is it could get worse before it gets better. Yeah, and, and that's often the case. And the answer to that is you say to these girls, with your current, bring it to here, shoot it to there. Okay, if you practice it every day, you can become very good at it. There's players that have proven that. Sydney Weiss, who you watch tonight play, outstanding. Outstanding athlete, but more importantly, outstanding person. Irrespective of shooting form, she is a superstar person. Now, she's a uh, lefty who shoots from the right side of her body, but she set Pac-12 all-time three-point shooting records with that form that I personally think is uncomfortable, but she's practiced it and practiced it and owns it, okay? But yes, when you try and make adjustments, it's not unusual for it to go downhill a little bit before it gets better, but you can explain that to the players by saying, if you buy into it a little bit of short-term pain for long-term gain, your new comfortable biomechanically efficient form will eventually get you a lot further in your career than if you get good at your current form. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. And that's um, where they have to be prepared that it might get a little worse before it gets better. Okay. Um, we're pressed for time, so again, if we can just give um, Phil a big um, thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of Basketball Victoria and Basketball Victoria Country, that's just a little thank you. Oh, thanks, thanks. Jody. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to come along.